Welcome to the Square One Live Prevention Q&A. It's Thursday, September 24th. I'm excited to be hanging out with you and answering your questions. I'm going to answer as many as I can in the next hour. So feel free to go ahead and post your questions and I'll get to them in a little bit of housekeeping before I do that. Um, the 50% off discount on the Square One program uh, ends on Friday. So if you've been tuning in and watching the free screening of the Square One program and you're on the fence about joining our community, I just want to encourage you to jump on it. The price goes back up after Friday and um, now is the best time to join. We have an amazing private support group that uh, has the best people in the world in it. I cannot oversell this enough. It's worth it. It's worth the cost of the course alone just to be a part of our private group. There's so many incredible people, inspirational stories, people who've healed cancer, people who are healing, people who are just getting started on the journey like maybe you. And um, when I was diagnosed with cancer in 2003, I had no support. There was no Facebook. There was no YouTube. There were no support groups. You know, there were some online chat forums that were not helpful at all. And uh, now we just live in such a unique time that if you need help and encouragement and support and you need to connect with like-minded people, you, you can do that. And I've created this, the Square One program and our private support group to help you do that. So anyway, I hope you will um, to look into that and consider it. You will not regret it. Uh, plus, you get all this amazing stuff. You get the Square One program, a lifetime access to it. You get my water fasting masterclass. You get a bonus copy of the program. You can give to someone you love, anyone and they'll get lifetime access to the program too. And um, so much more, so much more. So anyway, um, that's it. That's the housekeeping. That's my giant sales pitch. So let's answer some questions, okay? Someone says they want this t-shirt. Uh, you, can, you can buy this t-shirt. Uh, if you go to uh, teespring, T-E-E -E spring, I, dot com, I, I think maybe forward slash Chris Beat Cancer, or if you Google Teespring, Chris Beat Cancer, or maybe Chris Beat Cancer T-shirt, you'll find it. Uh, there's uh, there's actually links to it directly from my YouTube channel, too. And, and we, we made them in a bunch of different colors. And there's women's colors and sizes and styles. And there's some men's T-shirts. And anyway, <laughs> here I am. I'm pitching again. Um, okay. Let's get into these questions. Here we go. Now, tonight's Q&A is really geared more toward prevention uh, but if you're a patient, please feel free to ask your questions. You know, I'm, I'm just going to open this Q&A with this statement. You know, the things that you do to heal cancer are the same things you do to prevent it. So it, there's not a whole lot of difference there other than when you're trying to heal, you need to be a little more hardcore. So the nice thing about prevention is, yes, you need to take steps to change your life. And the principles are the same. Like everything that I teach in the Square One program is for prevention and or healing. It's the same, it's the same approach, and uh, but not quite as strict, obviously. And if you're into prevention, you don't have that same urgency and fear that a lot of patients are dealing with. So you really have the luxury of time. And um, it's again, this is Benjamin Franklin. I'm quoting here: "An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure." So uh, anything you can do now to reduce your risk of cancer is worth it. You will be glad as you, as you age, uh, not getting a cancer diagnosis when you see so many people around you getting a cancer diagnosis. Just think about this for a second. One out of every two men, half of men, and a third of women are predicted to be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. So which group do you wanna be in? Right. And this isn't like casino bets. Right. It's not just like the luck of the draw. Like, oh, half of men are just unlucky. All right. A third of women are just unlucky. That's not the deal. OK. You can influence your future. Your choices today matter. They will affect your life tomorrow. And so if you make good choices today, you can dramatically reduce your risk of cancer with your diet and lifestyle, environment choices and managing your stress. So. This is what I'm here to encourage you to do and help you and give you the, the tools and the resources, the information and the inspiration that you need to take action, to change your life and to stay the course, to stay on the healthy path. So um, 
that's what prevention's about, okay? The, the choices you make now can help you prevent cancer in the future. You can never be 100% cancer proof, but there's so much wonderful science on nutrition and lifestyle for cancer prevention. We know, we know what the way you need to live your life to drop your risk as low as possible. So without further ado, I'm gonna answer some questions. Here we go. <clears throat> First question, have you ever heard of a product from Leafy Organics called Prana? No. Next question, what are your thoughts on organic maple syrup? Well, maple syrup actually has uh, a unique anti-cancer compound in it. And uh, I think uh, as far as sweeteners go, I, I do love the taste of maple syrup. It's delicious. And in small amounts, I think it's okay. A little bit in oatmeal, for example, I think is wonderful. And the, the best sweeteners out there, the healthiest are going to be blackstrap molasses, super high in antioxidants, and minerals. Great source of uh, several mineral, minerals, calcium, magnesium, iron, and I think potassium. So uh, blackstrap molasses is fantastic. Date sugar, also very high in antioxidants. And date sugar is not processed. It's literally just dates that have been dehydrated and then ground into a powder. So date sugar is a whole food as opposed to, let's say, cane sugar, which is extracted. Um, um, uh, maple syrup, obviously, it just comes out of the maple tree and then uh, even honey. So those are my, my four favorite types of sweeteners. But the thing is, most of the foods that I eat don't need sweeteners, right? Giant salads don't need sweeteners. Vegetables don't need sweeteners. Fruit smoothies don't really need sweeteners, right? The fruit is sweet enough. Um, when you get into eating foods that need sweeteners, that's when you're going to start getting into trouble. Uh, I don't typically sweeten tea, although a little, little sweetener in tea is okay. Uh, oatmeal, I do sweeten oatmeal, blackstrap molasses, or dates, or sometimes just fresh fruit, you know, like blueberries, uh, apricots, dried apricots, things like that. So Again, the more you can move away from uh, consuming foods that need sweetening, the better. All right, here we go. Next question. Are there alternatives to getting a colonoscopy? Uh, is there another way to find out why I got a positive Cologuard test result? Well, that, that you know, so yes, Cologuard is an alternative to colonoscopy. Uh, if you got a Cologuard test, then you need to consult with a physician or with Cologuard to take the next steps if they're saying you're positive. Uh, and yeah, so I, you know, if you had a, a positive Cologuard test, the next step, by the way, if, for those of you who don't know, Cologuard is a stool test. So you, you can take this test, it, it checks your stool for DNA fragments, basically, of cancer. And if they show up and you, you might have precancerous cells, or cancer cells in your colon, then uh, Cologuard will tell you that. And the next step would be to have a colonoscopy from there. So, um, you know, you're saying you can't tolerate the prep and the clear liquids. I don't know. I mean, you just, th that's really going to be the next step. Because if you, the thing about colon cancer is it's it's highly preventable. Even if you eat a terrible diet, right? Colon, colon cancer is caused by our diet. It's That's the biggest cause. It's meat and dairy. Processed food, fast food, junk food, they're all colon cancer promoters. So if you eat a terrible diet, uh, colon cancer is still highly preventable if you get regular colonoscopies, because if you develop a polyp, they can snip it off before it be turns into a cancerous tumor. So um, colon cancer can also be prevented by eating a plant-based diet. That's the best diet to prevent all cancers, especially those of the colon. Uh, in rural Africa, the rate of colon cancer is about 50 times lower than the U.S. And they eat a diet that's mostly plants, mostly starches, very little animal food, very little processed food or junk food or anything like that. And again, 50 times lower rate of colon cancer. It's not genetic. They don't have any special, you know, anatomical or genetic traits. It literally is diet, period. So, um, but anyway, the whole point is, yes, you can prevent it with diet, but also even if you eat a terrible diet, it can be prevented if you catch those polyps early. So 
I think for you, Kat, yeah, you need to get a colonoscopy if you have a positive, um, if you have a positive Colegard test. Okay. Thoughts on 35% grade hydrogen peroxide? Well, yeah, that is a protocol I'm very familiar with, and I've read some books about it. I even have 35% hydrogen peroxide in my garage fridge. I have done that protocol just on a lark, just to see how, how it felt and how it affected me. Uh, I wouldn't call it a cancer cure. Uh, there have been really not been any real studies on this that, uh, so I don't, I can't, I don't have an educated opinion on it because there's no good science, right? There's claims, but there's no good science uh, on consuming 35% food grade hydrogen peroxide and what that's doing in your body and how beneficial it is or not or whatever. So unfortunately, yeah, there's a lot of information about it online and maybe some testimonials and things, but um, it's not like comparing it to broccoli or curcumin or resveratrol or blueberries or green tea or garlic, of which we have reams of incredible peer-reviewed uh, research, right? We know they're anti-cancer foods. So uh, yeah, that, you know, that's why you, you won't, if you pay close attention to me, you're not going to see me promoting uh, hydrogen peroxide as some kind of cancer uh, therapy or cure or anything, because there just isn't enough evidence uh, to say either way. Now, I'm not going to do the thing that, that physicians sometimes do, or oncologists specifically, where they poo-poo something and say, well, there's, there's no evidence that diet has anything to do with cancer, right? Uh, <laughs> which is, I mean, the, the most deceptive statement in the world. What they're saying is there's no clinical trial, right? There's no clinical trial with a hardcore nutrition, fruits and vegetables uh, for cancer. There's not, that doesn't exist. So therefore there's no evidence. Okay. But we know there's r ridiculous numbers of studies on all the anti-cancer compounds in fruits and vegetables and herbs and seeds and nuts and spices. And there are case studies that are published on cancer reversal. And there are countless testimonials online now of people who've reversed their cancer with a holistic nutritional approach uh, that, uh, you know, in survival against the odds. So that's all evidence, right? Okay. <clears throat> How long should you wait between eating and drinking juice? Well, you could drink juice with a meal. You can drink vegetable juice with a meal. That's fine. Uh, and, you, uh, you know, I never really followed a rule, but, you know, maybe if you, an hour after a meal or something, if you want to drink it in between meals, in that one to two hour window between meals is fine. So I wouldn't get too hung up on, you know, on rules. Okay. And th this is so important because uh, radical life change is, is a big undertaking, right? Changing your diet, changing your mindset, exercising. It's a, it's a, it requires massive action. So taking massive action is the most important thing. And don't get bogged down in, in perfectionism or in the details of, you know, how, how many teaspoons of uh, omelet powder should I take and what time, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't know. We don't, you know, you got to think about, are there studies about this? Not really. Right. So don't let the little things get in the way of the big things. The big things are massive nutrition in your body. Right. Juicing, giant salads, fruits and vegetables, as much as you can, 15 to 20 servings a day. Like just cram it in there and let it serve you. Uh, and don't get bogged down in perfectionism. Like I said, it's never going to, your, your protocol and your plan, it's never going to be perfect. But if you're in the square one community, if you pay attention to the information that I share, you will see there's a very simple way to approach this. It's hardcore. It's massive action, but it's very simple. It's sustainable. It's doable. Anyone can do these things. If you decide to do it, you can do it. So, okay. I, I like to say when in doubt, do both. <laughs> okay. If you're thinking, should I do this or that? I don't know. Do both. Okay. Do both. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, 
How do I feel about stevia and monk fruit? I've never been a big fan of stevia. I've never liked the taste, but I don't have a big issue with it as a product. The monk fruit's okay. Uh, it's okay. I don't know. I don't really use it. I don't have a problem with it. Again, I, you know, I don't feel the need to use a bunch of sweeteners because uh, the food that I eat, it doesn't, most of it doesn't require extra sweetener. The only thing I eat that requires sweetener is oatmeal. And I already talked about what I put in oatmeal. What protocol do you recommend to prevent childhood cancer? What should we do for our little ones? Well, <clears throat> you know, the best thing you can do for, for kid, for little ones, A, breastfeed, B, feed them lots of fruits and veggies. That's it. You know, it's simple stuff. As much fruits and vegetables as they want to eat, as you can get them to eat, great. If they like vegetable juice, great. If they like fruit smoothies, fantastic. Any fresh fruit they like, any veggies they like, great, fantastic. That's awesome. Do that. So it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to be shoving a bunch of supplements and stuff down their throat. Um, you know, vitamin D can be helpful. It'd be a much smaller dose for kids if they're not getting much sunshine. D is pretty important. And B12 might be important too. Um, if they're eating mostly plants, but beyond that, uh, you know, those are the main things. Those are the main things. <clears throat> Jennifer says, what brand do you trust on Amazon for all your supplements? And do you take colostrum? Okay. So I actually have an Amazon store. If you go to chrisbeatcancer.com forward slash Amazon, That'll take you to my Amazon store. And that's, there's a list on, in my store of all of my favorite supplements and brands. And there isn't one brand. In fact, you will, what you will see if you go there is you will see a multiple supplements uh, from different brands because I rotate brands. And that's what I want to encourage all of you to do is uh, rotate brands because I've been doing this a long time. I've been in the health and wellness world for almost 17 years. And I've seen a lot of supplement brands come and go. I've seen them get hyped up and turn out to be phony. I've seen some that were really high quality. And then, and then the quality starts to degrade over time. And the, I've seen supplement companies get bought and sold to bigger companies. And so um, I'm very cautious to like hitch my wagon to one brand. I've actually gotten burned in the past saying like, I love this brand so much. And then something changed and I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I'd never said I love that brand. Okay. So, uh, so rotate brands, right? This is called supplement hedging uh, because a sometimes supplement brands are contaminated. B sometimes they're lousy quality and you, you know, you don't know it. You don't realize it and you learn it later. Uh, C, um, sometimes they are sold or they change hands. Like I said, so, um, Rotate brands. It's easy. But anyway, if you go to crispycancer.com forward slash Amazon, you can see the brands that I like that I'm currently taking, the type of supplements and, and the brands. And beyond that, feel free to rotate other brands in there too. Just research a little bit. If it, Generally speaking, if it's an organic brand, that's fantastic, right? So if we're talking about barley grass powder, for example, there's multiple options of organic barley grass powder on Amazon. Rotate brands organic turmeric powder, organic omla powder, right? Just again, you can buy two or three brands at the same time and rotate them every other day, or you can buy one brand and take it for a month and the next month buy a different brand, right? So uh, not complicated. This is just a way to, to oh, oh, you know, the third reason that I, I got a little tangled up and I was saying is sometimes um, some brands are just not as uh, uh, eff um, efficacious as others, right? Some brands of supplements, and you don't know, you don't have a science lab, like you can't test this stuff. So some may be more potent than others, even though one brand may, be, may claim to be the most absorbable, right? But maybe they aren't, maybe they're actually pretty lousy and they're just good marketers, right? And, but another brand that, you know, it doesn't seem as good as this super shiny brand may actually be better. You might be absorbing more, it might be helping you more. So that's the other reason to rotate. I don't take colostrum. Okay. Let me see. Again, if questions are too 
if they're too complicated or related to treat, cancer treatment, then I won't be answering them because those are questions for medical professionals, right? I'm not a medical professional. I'm a survivor and a patient advocate, right? I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm here to coach you and encourage you and inspire you and give you information that you can think about and use and implement if it makes sense to you. But, but anyway, I can't give medical advice. So please understand that there's a big difference between my opinion as a survivor and a patient advocate and a doctor is uh, a doctor or a medical practitioners, medical advice. Okay. All right. So, uh, next question. <clears throat> Uh, what do you recommend if you have low iron and you're eating a lot of veggies? Google uh, for vegetables with, with high iron, I, um, fruits and vegetables with iron, highest iron containing foods, and you'll find what you need to focus on. Okay. <clears throat> you just may need to focus on eating vegetables that have the highest levels of iron, black beans, blackstrap molasses, um, and there's a lot more. So that's, a, that's an easy problem to solve. Uh, there's something there, something could be causing low iron, which could be internal bleeding. I hope that's not the cause. Um, but if it's just like you're a little bit anemic, uh, there are definitely plant foods with more iron than others. And you may need to focus on eating more of those, even leafy green vegetables. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, which is better dandelion tea or SEAC tea? They're totally different. It's totally different. It's like saying, you know, what's better, cats or dogs? Well, I'm sure you all have opinions on that. <laughs> but yeah, they're totally different. So I, I would, I personally would, if I had active cancer now, I would drink both. I would drink SEAC tea, which is an herbal tea, a combination of herbs, and dandelion tea, because they're totally different. You know, they're completely different compounds. Right. So what you're getting from dandelion tea, you will not get an SEAC. What you're getting an SEAC, you will not get a dandelion. So um, and they're not mutually exclusive. You can drink both. <clears throat> There's an article on crispy cancer about dandelion uh, tea, and I, I want to encourage you to read it because it will kind of blow your mind uh, on the anti-cancer benefits of dandelion root tea. So go to crispycancer.com, type in dandelion. And you'll see the article there. Laura says, how much plant-based protein do you get? <clears throat> well, I used to track it. Uh, and it's about, you know, 50 grams at least a day. And that's without taking any type of supplement. Because <clears throat> uh, we have been brainwashed to believe that we need protein, right? Protein, 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 protein bars, protein supplements, protein shakes, protein powder. Where do you get your protein? Well, here's the, here's the truth. The truth is every fruit, every vegetable, every nut and seed, every leafy green has amino acids. And your body uses those amino acids to build protein. Your body assembles protein for you. Your body also recycles protein because, you know, you've got trillions of cells dying constantly, like every day, right? Like a trillion cells are dying in your body or whatever. And your body will recycle proteins from those cells. Now, there are essential amino acids that your body cannot make. that You have to get from food. But all, all of those essential amino acids are found in plant food. And you don't have to combine foods. This is an old, outdated concept that is totally been proven false, by the way, but people still think it's true because they were taught it in grade school. But uh, there's no such thing as food combining. Like you don't, it's not necessary. There's no such thing as a complete protein, right? You don't need that. It, if you eat a, a certain group of amino acids in the morning and another group at dinner, you're fine. Your, your body will use, it will use it all. It will make protein. Okay. And so, I mean, look, look, this is, this is plant muscle right here. Okay. Like I, I work out a lot. I work out five to six days a week at Iron Tribe in Memphis, which is like a CrossFit style training gym. I've done this for nine years. Okay. I'm extremely fit. I can run really fast. I can do tons of pull-ups and push-ups and deadlifts and snatch and thrusters. 
uh, and uh, push press and jerk, I, I double unders. I can do all that stuff. I'm pretty good at it because I've done it for so long. And I'm in, a, I'm in the, the highest level of fitness I've ever been in my life. And I get all that from eating fruits and vegetables. And I'm also super lean and I'm cut and I have a six pack. Okay, this is not bragging. I'm just telling you, this is, I'm saying this so you understand, I don't need animal protein to be healthy, fit, and strong. And uh, there are vegan bodybuilders and vegan strongmen. Google Patrick Baboumian. Google vegan strongman if you want to see something crazy, right? If these guys, some of the strongest dudes in the world, are not eating animal protein, why do you need it? You don't. You, they don't need it to be strong. They're way stronger than you. They train way harder than you. Right? They compete at levels you, you don't compete at. They don't need animal protein to be healthy, fit, and strong. So that myth has, has basically been shattered, but it's going to take a while for it to permeate the, the minds of the world. Right? There's a great movie called The Game Changers, which is all about uh, vegan athletes who are performing at world-class levels. Right, just to show you what's possible, just so you can see. Oh, well, there's Olympians, swimmers, runners, cyclists, strongmen, triathletes, marathon runners, like all these incredible people, uh, uh, UFC fighters that are not eating animals. Okay, so anyway, all that to say, don't worry about protein. If you eat three meals a day of plant food, you'll get enough protein. Here's one more point on the protein tip. <clears throat> When do you think a human needs the most protein? At what stage in life would you assume a human needs the most protein? I know most of you are thinking well, when you're a baby, right? Because you come out of the womb and, and you're growing fast, right? Babies, they're doubling in size, you know what I mean? In a matter of months, it's like, oh, he's eight pounds. Oh, now he's 16 pounds. Now he's 32 pounds. Now he's 64 pounds, right? <laughs> I did this as if the baby would be this long. <laughs> but anyway, right? Like a baby and a young child is doubling at a rate, uh, at a very fast rate, okay? And guess what? Mother's milk is only 10% protein, 10%. It's mostly fat and carbohydrates. So again, if a baby only needs about 10% of their calories from protein, you only need about 10% of your calories from protein. It's very easy to get when you eat tons of fruits and vegetables, a plant-based diet, whole food plant-based diet. Okay. <clears throat> Is Vietnamese cinnamon dangerous? I have no idea. Why is wheat not good? I am not in the camp that thinks wheat is bad. I'm not one of those people that's afraid of wheat and grains. Okay. Uh, wheat has kept humans alive for since the dawn of time, basically. Okay. Grains have kept humans alive. There's nothing wrong with grains, generally speaking. Now, when, when they're processed, when they're sprayed with pesticides, when they're hybridized, if they're ge genetically modified, whatever, uh, although there's not really a whole lot of GMO grains at this point, corn, but uh, that's a whole nother story. But if we're talking about organic whole grains, those are health promoting foods. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with organic whole wheat, rye, barley, millet, spelt, teff, oats, corn. Okay, those are health promoting foods. Rice. Okay, I mean, you know, 80% of the Chinese diet is rice. <laughs> it has been like for thousands of years, you know what I mean? How, how did they live on so much rice? Well, because rice is actually healthy. It's okay, it's not bad. Uh, grains have been demonized by some crazy chicken little type people over the years and everybody thinks they're terrible. A small, small percentage of people have gluten sensitivity or intolerance and that's a different story. Right. But the average person, uh, the, your problem is not the grains. It's that you're not eating whole grains. You're eating white flour, which is just empty calories, highly processed. It's like basically like eating pure sugar with no nutritional value. Right. So 
that's not real food. That's just fake food. But, uh, but yeah, don't be afraid of whole grains. They're wonderful. Okay, someone asks, is Swerve sugar replacement safe? I have never heard of Swerve, so I do not know. Kate says, Chris, I've really, oh, well, this is a long one. Hang on. Uh, okay, this is a long question. I'm going to see if they're, okay. So yeah, this, uh, Kate is asking, why am I against the ketogenic diet for cancer? Well, if you go to my website, I wrote a very lengthy article. Uh, so if you go to Chris Speak Cancer, type in ketogenic or even keto, you will find the article. And in that article, I link to a number of studies on the ketogenic diet for cancer. And for many years, starting in 2012, I started paying attention because that's, that's when the hype about the keto diet started to, to bubble up, especially with cancer. And I thought, wow, well, this is interesting. I, I took a deep dive into this uh, theory about starving cancer. Cancer feeds on sugar. Therefore, if you don't eat sugar or carbohydrates, you'll starve the cancer cells. If you eat this a high fat diet, 80% of calories from fat. Well, this is intriguing. Okay. And I was very open to it. I was very interested. And I, I, I just, you know, paid attention to as much as I could researchers and experts and doctors that were talking about it. And, uh, but in the back of my mind, I thought, well, this is really interesting, but everyone I know who's healed, that's not what they did. This is a very new thing. This is a new idea. So, it, you know, I had this sort of uneasy feeling about it, uh, being an experimental diet and a new diet, but I was very open for years and then the studies started to come out on humans. And guess what they found? Doesn't work at all. Doesn't work. It does not cure cancer. Uh, it doesn't cure cancer in mice. Doesn't cure cancer in humans. In some cases, it makes the cancer more aggressive, depending on your cancer type. By the way, I'll link to all these studies and explain them in that article. Uh, and it's extremely unnatural. Like, no population, no civilization, in the world eats a ketogenic diet, not even Eskimos. They eat a lot of fat, but they're not in ketosis because they've been studied. They're not in ketosis, so they don't actually eat a ketogenic diet. They eat a lot of blubber, right? Whale and seal blubber. But guess what? They also have very short lifespans. So any population group, people group that has a short lifespan, that's not the diet you wanna emulate. Just saying, uh, and there's nowhere else in the world that people eat a ketogenic diet. It's a new diet. It's a fad diet. It's, you know, the only people doing it are people that have bought into a fad. It's unnatural. It's unhealthy. It's unsustainable. It's nutrient deficient. Uh, I would not eat a ketogenic diet, period. No fruit. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. Fruit's amazing. So good for you. No carbohydrates, no starchy vegetables. That's insane. No squash, no sweet potato. Come on. No oats, no legumes. Let me tell you something about legumes. The number one food associated with longevity, with long life on planet Earth, on every continent is legumes. Beans. The healthiest, longest living people on every continent eat the most beans. How in the world would a diet that forbids beans be good for you long-term? It ain't. It's not. Will it cause weight loss? Sure. But that's a short-term crash diet. And you're losing weight because your body's in crisis. So I just, I, the best way to lose weight to eat a, a diet that's rich in fruits and vegetables. Stuff yourself with fruits and vegetables. And guess what? A diet rich in fruits and vegetables, especially lots of raw vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, giant salads, is, is going to fill you up. It's going to give you so much energy, but it's also very low in calories naturally. So the weight will just melt off. We've seen so many people lose thousands of pounds in our community without even trying just by eating healthy. It's not even a weight loss diet. Weight loss is a byproduct 
of healthy living, right? Losing excess weight. When you, if you follow the square one principles and you just start living healthy, you start taking care of yourself. You don't have to count calories. You don't have to think about weight loss. You don't have to weigh yourself. You don't have to deprive yourself. You can eat an abundance of food, never have to be hungry, and the weight will come off because that is the diet you're intended to eat. And you will get down to a healthy, slim and trim weight like me. Slim, trim, tons of energy, plenty of protein, <laughs> no problem, okay? So that's my opinion on the ketogenic diet. It's just, it doesn't work. It's not good. Don't do it. Don't get sucked in. The people promoting this diet are using junk science. They're twisting some really bad science and trying to make a, make a case that has no legs. And if you read my article, you'll see why. You can click through and look at the studies. The studies that people have used to claim the ketogenic diet has a benefit for cancer show that it doesn't. But people actually cite these studies as if they do. It's ridiculous. It's mostly rat studies. So that's a rant. Uh, <laughs> I apologize for ranting for so long. But look, this is an important message. The ketogenic diet is terrible. It's horrible. Like You will be nutrient deficient. There's so much, so much incredible phytonutrients in plant food that you will not get into your body if you eat 80% of calories from fat. Even if you're eating clean keto, which is the new trend, there's no way. You can't stay in ketosis eating 80% of fat calories on a plant-based diet unless all you're eating is, is avocados, nuts, and seeds. That, like, and, and, and consuming a ridiculous amount of oil, like coconut oil. This is so nutrient deficient. It's deplorable. Don't do it. Do not get sucked into the fat. Love, Chris. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'll, I'll put one little cherry on top. If you're a Christian, if you're a believer and you believe that God created the earth for us, you believe in there's a garden of Eden, guess what? They were eating fruit. The garden of Eden. It was fruit. You think they were eating a bunch of broccoli? Adam and Eve eating broccoli? No, they were eating mostly fruit, okay? So, you know, they weren't sitting around eating avocados all day. Come on, avocado is a fruit, though, so I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, but that, that is, if you're a Christian, that is God's original diet for mankind. It's fruits and vegetables. We didn't start killing animals until they got kicked out of the garden, and then they needed to kill animals to survive because... They, they didn't have access to the garden anymore. Now it was like, you're in the wilderness, right? Anyway, that's a whole other, uh, that's a whole podcast, you know, but okay, here we go. Uh, someone says, I'm eating the diet you recommend, but my stomach is bloating. Is that normal? Yeah, that's normal at first because your, your digestive system has to adapt and it will to eating more vegetables, right? To eating more plant food. Because if you've been eating a bunch of meat and dairy, your microbiome right now, is uh, is a bunch of bacteria that likes meat and dairy. And when you shift, and, and your body has been producing a lot of enzymes that break down meat and dairy, fat and protein, and it hasn't producing been producing a lot of enzymes that break down plant matter, okay? So, but that'll shift. Your body is adaptive. And so, usually it takes a couple weeks, right? So, a couple weeks of, of some bloating, maybe a little crampiness, maybe some gas, it's okay. You'll, you'll be fine. Just give your body a little bit of time. Stay the course. You'll thank me. How do you measure of serving servings of vegetables? Well, you know, you can just Google this, but uh, generally speaking, one cup of raw vegetables is a serving and a half a cup of cooked vegetables is a serving. That's how you measure. But I mean, you don't really need to measure. But, you know, if you have a bowl full of giant salad, that's going to be three or four servings. If you have a, a big plate full of cooked veggies, it's going to be three or four servings. So, I mean, it's, it, you know, again, this is one of those don't let the little things get in the way of the big things. But, yeah, Google what's a serving of vegetables? What's a serving of fruit? It's either a cup or half a cup, depending on the fruit or vegetable and whether or not it's cooked or raw. What do I think about oil, especially flax oil? Flax oil is amazing. I love flax oil. It's very high in omega-3s, which are anti-inflammatory. 
and uh, some anti-cancer properties there too. So uh, flax oil and olive oil are my two choice oils. Uh, we generally consume a, a diet that's lower in oils, but if you're eating giant salads, flax oil or olive oil or a little of both on the salad is totally fine. And a little bit of oil, a little bit of fat actually increases the absorption of fat soluble nutrients like fat soluble vitamins and minerals in plant food. So yes, uh, organic flax oil on the salads, no problem at all. I, I don't, I don't uh, re recommend the, the Budwig protocol, the flax and cottage cheese deal. Um, I think there's a lot of benefit to the flax. I think there's basically no benefit to the cottage cheese. So um, it's, it's just not something that uh, I'm very familiar with it. I've read up on it. I've got one of Budwig's books on my shelf. I've read, um, I just, I know a lot of people who've healed that it, what they didn't consume the Budwig mixture. And I know some people that healed that did. And so it's like, eh, did it help? Hard to say. But the, 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 what concerns me is the saturated fat and hormones and cancer promoting, uh, side effects of that much consuming that much dairy. And so, yeah, I think I talked about this in the other Q and a last night, but I think I did, but anyway, you know, milk is baby cow growth formula. That's what milk is. Cow's milk. It's designed for one purpose. That's to take a newborn calf. that's like 65 pounds and get them up to 500 pounds real fast. <laughs> okay. That's what cow's milk is for. So like if you want to you want to consume something with cow's milk has over 50 different hormones in it from what I understand with a bunch of hormones that are telling your cells to multiply and grow and telling your body to grow uh, that's what you would drink milk for and you're sending signals growth signals to your body. Well guess what? You don't want to be sending growth signals to cancer cells. So dairy yeah, I'm I would stay away from dairy if you're trying to, to heal cancer. If you're trying to prevent cancer, just keep dairy at a minimum. You know, very, very small part of your diet. Or some people just never consume dairy at all, and they're fine. You know, it's like there's nothing in dairy that you need to survive, right, if you have an abundance of plant food. Okay. Uh, Didi says, Chris, I've learned so much. I'm so grand, so thankful I got square one. Great, Didi. Welcome to the community. I'm so glad. I'll see you in the private Facebook group, I'm sure. Uh, Omri says, I'm drinking my beet, carrot, apple, ginger, lemon juice. Yes, that's the square one juice formula right there. Miss um, Johnny says, what do you recommend for low vitamin D? I recommend taking vitamin D. <laughs> what an idea. Uh, take vitamin D3 if you have low vitamin D. Uh, low vitamin D is the two things that are super relevant right now. One, Put you at a high risk for cancer and two, a high risk for COVID-19 infection and other viruses too. I talked about this last night. Vitamin D3 is the number one anti-cancer vitamin. You need to be taking it. Most people don't get enough sunshine and they're just chronically low, chronically deficient, especially if you have darker skin because it takes more time in the sun to produce the same amount of vitamin D in a darker skin person than it does in someone like me or even paler than me. Okay. So, um, so uh, you take vitamin D3 and uh, I like betterwayhealth.com. They have a vitamin D3 supplement I take. It's 5,000 international units in a tiny little easy to swallow gel cap. And uh, I take one to two per day. So I take five to 10,000 international units per day, usually 10,000 in the winter and 5,000 in the summer. That's what I do. And uh, it's easy. It's easy to raise your vitamin D3 levels by taking vitamin D3. It just works, okay? Um, there are other things that help your body absorb vitamin D3. Magnesium is important. Uh, vitamin K2 is important in a different way. It helps your body use calcium more efficiently if you're taking a lot of D3. Um, uh, selenium, resveratrol, and even exercise increases your body's absorption of vitamin D3. Okay. I wrote a great article about vitamin D3. It sounds like I'm bragging, but an article I'm really proud of, really well-researched. Uh, if you go to Chris Beat Cancer, type in D3. There's a, a long article with all this really fascinating research and science and benefits of D3 for preventing viral infections and reducing cancer risk. 
uh, and how to get your blood to optimal levels, all this kind of cool stuff. Uh, so if you want to go down that rabbit hole, there's an article there for you for free. Uh, Matthew says, have you read, read Jane McClellan's book and thoughts on her program? I haven't I answered it in yesterday's Q&A. Uh, so I don't want to rehash that, but I've interviewed Jane. So if you go to Crispy Cancer, type in Jane, you could watch my interview with Jane McClelland. Okay. All right. Julia says, my husband has lost 30 pounds after had a cancerous kidney removed. How can he gain weight eating a plant-based diet? Well, when people ask me this question, my question for you, which I probably won't be able to see, is, is he underweight? Or, you know, because just because he lost 30 pounds doesn't mean he needs to gain 30 pounds back. And this is really important. You know, when you start getting healthy, if you have excess weight, you're going to lose it and your clothes aren't going to fit anymore. And you got to buy some, you know, smaller clothes. And I know that's annoying and it's expensive, but it's also a good excuse to update your wardrobe. So there's that. But what you need to do before you worry about your weight or about someone else's weight is you need to go to Google and type in BMI calculator. And when you type in BMI calculator, a BMI calculator will appear magically. <laughs> and then you type in your height and your weight. And it will tell you if your body mass index is underweight, normal, or overweight. And if you're not overweight, if you're normal, you don't need to gain any more weight. You're fine. You just need to buy some better fitting clothes. If you're underweight, and you need to get back into the normal weight range. By the way, you can play around with the weight number to, to figure out, oh, what is the normal weight range for my height, okay? What's the, and it's a pretty wide range. Usually for any given height, let's say five, five, it can be a 30 pound, you know, 30, 40 pound range that's considered normal. So I'm saying all that to say, uh, your husband is probably still in a normal weight range. He's probably fine. Uh, most men are 20, 30 pounds overweight, you know? So, but assuming he's underweight, he just needs to eat more food. Eat more food. That's how you gain weight on a plant-based diet. You eat more food. Uh, so I have a recipe for what I call the supercharged oatmeal. If you go to Crispy Cancer, type in oatmeal, that'll come up. And I talk about all the virtues of oatmeal, but also how to uh, to supercharge it with uh, more nutritious ingredients to make a really high calorie but healthy meal, like a thousand calorie bowl of oatmeal. It's pretty easy. You add almond butter, hemp seed, flax seed, chia seed, blueberries, a little blackstrap molasses. Use a full cup of dry oats. It's it's not hard. But anyway, the recipes they're on crispy cancer. Okay. Didi says, do we fall under prevention if cancer has been removed and there's no cancer in our body? Well, yes, but you're in a more serious uh, compartment, okay, category, because you're trying to prevent a recurrence versus preventing just ever getting cancer. So if you have a cancerous tumor and they remove it and they say, we got it all, you need to go hardcore. Because guess what? Cancers can come back. They come back often in people. And so I would treat yourself and your situation for the next, I'd say, two years. Hardcore. Two years. Hardcore cancer prevention and healing diet. What I talk about in the Square One program. Uh, if you want to be on the safe side. If you want to cross your fingers and, you know, gamble, then, you know, just don't do anything. But I would not do that. I would not, you know, doctors are going to say, you're fine. Yeah, just go back, go back to your old way of life. Just go, go enjoy yourself. You're cancer free. It's, it's really bad advice. It's really, really bad advice. It's negligence. So um, my advice to you as a patient advocate is to uh, go hardcore, change your whole life, identify everything in your life that may have been contributing to cancer and remove those things, re remove the disease promoters, replace them with health promoters. Plant-based diet, daily exercise, 
removing stressful things from your life, getting right with God. These are the foundational things. And by the way, those none of those things cost you anything. Those of you who tuned into the free square one screening, I gave you my free therapies guide. And that's 10 of the most powerful free therapies that you can do for prevention and healing. And see, that's the secret. The secret is it doesn't cost anything to get healthy. It costs nothing. You don't have to buy a single supplement, although vitamin D3 would be, be helpful. But beyond that, which is very inexpensive, the most powerful therapies you can do for yourself to prevent and heal cancer are free. And most of them start with the letter F. Can you guess what they are? Well, number one is food, a plant-based diet. Plant-based diet doesn't cost you any more than you're spending on junk food. When you stop buying fast food, processed food, Starbucks, right, sugary drinks, right? I mean, think about it. If you're drinking any beverage, Coke, coffee, whatever, energy drinks, and you stop buying them and you start drinking water, you've already saved money, okay? So, and you stop eating at restaurants and eating out, you save a lot of money. And so the money that you save, not eating out, not buying, you know, junky drinks and junk food and all that, you take that money and you buy fruits and vegetables with it. There's no net loss. Fitness starts with an F. Fasting starts with an F. Fellowship, that's relationships, like healthy, encouraging relationships. The, the best, most powerful therapies you can do for yourself, start with the letter F. The big one is forgiveness. Forgiving the people who've hurt you. All these things cost you nothing, okay? Faith, starts with the letter F, costs you nothing, okay? All right, here we go. Okay, oh, about 10 minutes. Okay, man, the where did the time go? I hope this has been good. Give me some hearts and thumbs up and likes if this has been helpful. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, Karen said, oh, this is kind of an interesting question. Uh, so Karen says, there's so many foods and supplements to help your immune system. How do you know how strong your immune system is? That is a great question. And you really... Other than doing a lot of clinical testing, you really don't know how strong your immune system is, okay? And even getting sick doesn't mean you have an, a weak immune system, right? Uh, if you get sick often, that is a clue that you your immune system is weak, right? But if you get sick occasionally, once a year, or maybe twice a year, it doesn't mean you have a weak immune system, right? But the thing is, I wouldn't worry about how strong your immune system is. I would just understand that the best, the, 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 the way that, you, that we know you can strengthen it, strength is such an arbitrary, you know, like word, right? Like how strong are we talking, you know, how do you measure immune strength? I don't even know. But what we do know is, is that the, the most powerful immune supporting foods are fruits and vegetables, okay? These are the foods that contain compounds that improve immune function, that boost immune function, green leafy vegetables, mushrooms, uh, vitamin D3. Again, that's a supplement, not a food, but it's a very important component of your innate immune system. Okay. Uh, and blueberries boost immune function. So I wouldn't worry about how strong it is. I would just get as much wonderful plant food into your body every day and just believe and understand that it is helping support your immune system. That's what it will do. You, whether, whether you believe it or not, you don't even have to believe it. It's going to do it anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, all right. All right. Let's see. A few more, a time for a few more questions. Let me do a little scan real quick and see if I can find a few to end on that are, I feel really good about. Um, someone said they're having a problem logging into the membership site of square one, just email support at chrisbeatcancer.com. My, my team is awesome. They will take care of you. You won't have, yeah, you'll be fine. 
Okay. Um, uh, okay, this is a, a good prevention question. What do you want to recommend for bone health? Wonderful. Vitamin D3 and K2 are incredible for bone health. Don't take calcium. You don't need it. Calcium is actually terrible for you. Don't take it. You get calcium from food, from green leafy vegetables, from plant food, nuts and seeds and things. That's fine. But do not take calcium. Calcium will end up causing atherosclerosis, hardening your arteries. Okay, so don't do it. Um, but the best way to strengthen your bones is, are you ready? Exercise, especially lifting heavy weight. Okay, so even if you're, you know, let's say a little old lady going to the gym, getting getting on the machines that are safe and lifting as pushing and pulling and using your legs as, as heavy as you can. Right. Pushing as much heavy weight as you can. Guess what? That sends signals to your brain to strengthen your muscles and bones. Send signals through your nervous system to strengthen your bones. You, you, we've all heard the expression, use it or lose it, right? And as we age, we tend to become less physically active. And the less physically active you are, the lower your bone density will become, okay? So the way to maintain bone density is to stimulate your bones and muscles with heavy exercise. Again, safely, using machines. You don't have to use free weights. You don't have to do like dump barbell squats, you know, but just getting in the machines. If you're older, if you're younger, of course you can do more, but getting in the machines and, and, and figuring out what's really heavy for you. What's a weight that you can only do maybe five times, right? Uh, and do maybe three sets of that weight where, where the fifth one is pretty tough to get, right? Like you're really straining. That's, that's what you need to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, three minutes. Uh, da, 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 da. Top three supplements for prevention. <clears throat> okay, this is easy. I already said it. Vitamin D3, definitely. B12, definitely. The third one, mm, that's tricky because there's a lot of supplements I really like. Uh, I love beta-glucan, uh, betterwayhealth.com has, has the best, highest quality beta-glucan, which is an immune-boosting supplement. Uh, that's found in barley. It's a compound, polysaccharide, that's found in barley, mushrooms, nutritional yeast. So I love beta-glucan for immune support um, and prevention, but I also love uh, curcumin, C3 complex, Better Way Health also has that product, curcumin extra strength. Uh, um, uh, resveratrol is fantastic. Um, I'm trying, I rotate a lot of different things, but those are supplements that I really like to take. I like to take them. Um, and I'll just stop there. I could keep going, but really th those four are really pretty special. D3, that was five, wasn't it? B12, a beta glucans, or a mushroom type supplement like host defense, my community, or host defense, stamets, seven. Uh, it, it, those, those are kind of interchangeable and mushroom based supplement. Uh, and then a resveratrol and curcumin. C3 complex curcumin. All right, uh, I've still got a little time. Let's go, let's go. Uh, great question, here we go. What do you eat when you're traveling or you're on vacation? Well, when I had cancer, I was super hardcore. I didn't travel much. And when I did, I took my food with me, okay? So I, I, I did not change my diet, right? It's like I was determined to get well and I wasn't going to make any exceptions to my diet. I mean, it was life and death. So like, I'm not going to go out of town and eat a bunch of burgers and fries and milkshakes and cheeseburgers. Like I'm eating raw <laughs> fruits and vegetables, baby. Uh, so now when I travel, I am definitely more lenient and I eat plant-based and I just do the best I can in, in the, with the circumstances I've got. So if I find myself, there have been times when I've been running through an airport and I will stop at uh, one of the little kiosks and I'll buy all six bananas. I'll buy the bunch of bananas and I'll eat six bananas. That's lunch, right? Or breakfast or whatever it is. Okay. Other times, uh, if, I'm, if I'm at a restaurant with friends or family, 
uh, and it's a nice restaurant or whatever, just I'm at a restaurant, I will look at the menu and I'll look at the vegetable sides and I will order four or five vegetable sides, right? Green beans, uh, potatoes, uh, asparagus, a salad, uh, whatever, you know, whatever they've got that sounds good to me. I'll eat the veggies, right? Maybe Brussels sprouts, whatever. Uh, so it's not hard to eat healthy. Now, is it organic? No, right? When you're eating it at a restaurant. So those are the kind of exceptions I make. I, I eat try to eat mostly plant-based, if not 100% plant-based when I'm traveling. And I just, I don't, you know, beat myself up and go without and starve because a restaurant doesn't have organic food. So that's the way I make the, the, the best of it. And I think it's just, again, it's not hard. It's not hard. Chipotle, okay? We're on a road trip and it's lunchtime and there's a Chipotle. I'm like, great, go in there. I get a burrito bowl. I get brown rice, black beans, pinto beans, the fajita veggies, which is the peppers and onions. Uh, and then I'll have them put um, nacho cheese. Just kidding. Uh, no, guacamole and a little bit of the, I like the mild, the medium uh, green uh, salsa or whatever. Uh, and um, a little bit of lettuce. And I am a happy camper. I mean, it's, you know, the, burri the all veggie burrito bowl is delicious. It's great. Sometimes I get the burrito. Sometimes I get the bowl. It's the same ingredients. Obviously, the burrito has a tortilla. The bowl doesn't. So easy. It's, I mean, it's an easy way to get a healthy meal on the go right there, the Chipotle burrito bowl. Now, it's a little higher in sodium than I would, would prefer to eat. It's not organic. That's obviously not optimal. But still very healthy. And I'll, I'll let me end with this because I, I get asked this a lot about organic food. And I want to, I'll make sure everybody understands. I said this at the beginning. It's a good theme for this, this Q and a, which is don't let the little things get in the way of the big things. The big things are eating a plant-based diet. The little thing, right? It's important, but it's a littler thing is eating all organic. Okay. So in a perfect world, or in a perfect circumstance, you would have access to everything you wanted to eat and it would all be organic. So the, your local grocery stores have all the produce that you want. And it's all organic. That's perfect. Okay. But that's not the reality for a lot of people, especially in other countries and in even small cities and small towns in the U.S. Like organic food is, can be pretty scarce. I live in Memphis. It's a big city. We have a Whole Foods, right? We have Sprouts and other uh, Kroger and, we, you know, whatever. I can get organic produce. So having said all that, if you can't get organic produce, just get produce, right? Eat fruits and vegetables. They're great. All organic's perfect. That's the best. Not all organic is still fantastic, right? You're still way up here. You're still doing way better than the standard American diet, which is tons of fast food, processed food, junk food, meat and dairy. OK, does that make sense? I just want to I want to alleviate any stress that you may be feeling about, you know, like, oh, it's going to be all organic or I'm going to die. No, it doesn't. All organic is best, but all fruits and vegetables is second best and still fantastic. And just do the best you can. And especially if look, if you're on a if you're if your money's tight, right, if you have a limited budget. Uh, organic food and depending on the food group can get really expensive. And so sometimes you can get organic food for the same cost as conventional, but other times it's more expensive. And if it feels like it's like really too expensive, it's okay. Don't get the organic, get the conventional. It's good. The rule of thumb is, by the way, if you're eating the skin, it's better to buy it organic. So like berries, better to buy organic because, the, the, uh, because of pesticides. <clears throat> Oranges, not so much because you don't eat the skin. Right. Apples, organic. Pineapples, don't need to be organic. You, you follow me? Avocados, don't need to be organic. Celery, should be organic, okay? So that's the deal. If you eat the skin, organic's better. If you don't eat the skin, don't feel compelled to buy organic. Uh, it's, not, it's not necessarily more nutritious because it's organic. It's, it, in some cases, they found a little more nutritional content. But the main thing you're trying to do is you're trying to avoid unnecessary exposure to pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, things like that, that, that are sprayed on uh, fruits and vegetables, right? So 
that are not grown organically. So anyway, okay, I think that's a good place to stop. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been really fun. I hope this has been helpful. Give me some hearts and thumbs up if this has been helpful to you. I'm sorry I couldn't get to all the questions, but it kind of gets crazy. I mean, there were 1,300 <laughs> comments and or questions on last night's Q and A, <laughs> you know, so I, I, you know, it's too many, but anyway, I'm doing the best I can to answer as many as I can in the time allotted. Um, so uh, again, I mentioned that this at the beginning of the Q and A, if the, the square one program is 50% off right now through tomorrow, which is Friday, then it, the price goes back up. So if you've watched some of the free screenings, some of the 10 modules, now is the best time to get it at the best price. If you want to join our private community and have lifetime access to the program and get all the wonderful bonuses, uh, which I will not go over because it's a whole, I mean, we over deliver like crazy. But if you click the link above or below this video, that'll take you to the page that, that talks about everything that's included in the program and the different prices if, if you want the DVDs and the books or if you just want online access. So anyway, there's links to that if you want to learn more. Now's the best time to jump in. If you don't buy it now, if you don't join our community now, it's open year-round. People join all the time. They buy the program all the time. It's just now's the best price, okay? And that goes away uh, Friday. All right, so it's been really fun. Again, thanks for hanging out. Y'all are great. Great questions. It's a pleasure to serve you. It's an honor to serve you. Um, there's nothing better than the feeling of being able to share what you've learned with others and to know that it's helpful, you know, and some of you are in this cancer journey right now. And I want you to understand that your life after cancer can be even better than it was before cancer. And I know some of you are struggling with hopelessness and despair and discouragement and fear. And I, you need to start believing number one, that you can get well, and number two, that your life is going to be better because of cancer. Mine is better because of cancer. Every survivor I know will tell you their life is better because of cancer, because it changed them in every way. And so I just want you to look forward to that, right? Set your, set your sights on the future, on a future life that's even better than your past. Thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon. Love to you all. Have a great night.